Christian School Confidential Salutes, Christopher Peterman. Hey, I'm Dwayne Walker, the author of Christian School Confidential, the novel about a young woman who finds out that her daughter has been sexually molested by the founder of her church, and the odyssey of people that she runs into as she tries to find closure and discovers that justice and closure are not the same thing. Uh, there's a misconception going on about this book uh, in the internet that I've simply taken existing fundamentalist scandals and just fictionalized them. But the reality is uh, a lot of the plot devices that are in this book were from earlier productions I did, Garage Cinema Productions, as uh, Bart Akins, one of the actors who's been with me in a number of movies, call them, uh, which is low-budget movies. Uh, usually shot on video of personalized topics that the mainstream industry would never touch. And I borrowed very freely from characters from Bible Madness, Spring Break Missionaries, Rapture Dreams, Don't Go in the Church, and even Catholic School Catfight. He made me watch spanking, and then he spanked me all over my bare bottom. And what's even worse is that he made me read passages from his Bible. They weren't from the King James Version. An outrage! An abomination! I'd like to take a moment and uh, talk about the situation regarding Christopher Peterman, who was recently expelled from Bob Jones University, allegedly for watching Glee. Well, as always, there's always a little more to the story, so I just want to make sure that um, you're familiar with... Uh, some of the uh, other aspects of this that perhaps uh, Bob Jones University may not want you to think about, such as the Tina Anderson case, which is truly where this story begins. Uh, in that situation, Tina Anderson was made pregnant by Ernie Willis, who raped her. She was underage, and it took many, many, many years, but eventually this case came to light, and it was revealed that one of the things that happened was Chuck Phelps, her pastor, had Ernie and Tina parade in front of the church and apologize for their sins, except it was not presented to the congregation that they were actually together, that Ernie had indeed committed statutory rape against Tina Anderson. As far as the congregation was concerned, this was two separate issues. And in spite of the fact that Chuck Phelps has said again and again that he called the police, the reality is, he literally phoned it in. Uh, Ernie had attended this church many, many times since then, and Chuck Phelps did nothing. So eventually this case uh, went to court, and Ernie was found guilty and is now serving time in prison. Chuck Phelps was on the board of Bob Jones University, and even after the Tina Anderson case was decided, uh, was still on there, really without very little controversy, until Christopher Peterman developed Do Right BJU, a Facebook site that people began flocking to, and they began posting their stories of horrible advice regarding uh, sexual abuse. It was coming out that in counseling, some of the counselors at BJU were telling rape victims if you felt any pleasure whatsoever during the actual rape, you need to ask God to forgive you of that. And that, that's the kind of backward thinking that uh, has permeated uh, fundamentalism in the world of the IFB <laughs> enough that there are uh, many uh, former pastors and youth workers in jail today for molesting children and the shocking thing about it isn't necessarily them, but how many knew of these incidents and refused to do anything about it. And Christopher Peterman realized that the time has come to stand up and start addressing some of these issues. And hence we had Do Right BJU. And of course, uh, people like me, who had spent time at Bob Jones University, began to wonder how long he would actually last there. I myself spent three weeks at Bob Jones University, and um, the reason I went there is because I had uh, wanted to make an intelligent decision. I was brought up in that whole IFB background at Trinity Baptist Church, Trinity Christian Academy in Jacksonville, Florida, 
and teens when they graduated usually had two or three places in those days and one of them was Bob Jones University and I wanted to make an intelligent decision before I went there so I contacted the university and asked them if I could look at their college uh, student handbook and I was told no uh, we don't do that because if you were to read our rules you might misunderstand them and we would prefer you wait until you're up here well, by the time you spend the gas and the money to get up there, uh, perhaps you might read them and find out that the rules aren't your liking. What are you going to do? You just wasted some money going up there. Uh, yes, I knew they were conservative. However, I also knew that there was a lot of fiction regarding life of Bob Jones mixed in with fact. Uh, one of the uh, fictions that was thrown out was that they censored the newspaper and cut out newspaper ads. Well. When I went there, one of the first things they did, and this was during a college trip that Trinity took over, uh, when we all went to Bob Jones, is we looked at the newspapers and saw that there were indeed advertisements for R-rated movies and advertisements for bars, and they were not cut out. However, when I went to the library, I noticed that there were pictures in certain books uh, that contained nude photographs that were cut out. However, if you looked at uh, some books by Robert Ringer uh, at the time, uh, Looking Out for Number One, and um, what was that other one, Restoring the American Dream. Uh, there's, you know, some expletives uh, scattered throughout the book, and they weren't marked out. So I realized, okay, maybe I'm hearing wrong about Bob Jones. Let me look at a catalog and make a decision, or let me look at the student handbook and make a decision for myself. But they did not want me to look at it. They wanted me to show up. So I showed up and I spent three weeks at Bob Jones University and found out that it was indeed as bad as I thought because I would keep getting pulled into one of the dorm soups uh, and then eventually the Dean of Men. And the things I was being pulled in for were really stupid things. That they, they weren't great noble causes. There are things like, Duane, we understand that you've been having extensive conversations about disco. What? At the time, I had never even been to a disco, never even wanted to be in there, but this was the 70s and I must have made some offhanded remark and that little incident was brought up and I had to answer for some uh, little illusion that I made in the conversation that I even forgot that I made. So, you know, this that, that's what I think of when I hear people asking Chris Peterman about, well, you understood the rules when you went there. Maybe he did, but some of us didn't. Some of us requested to see the rules in advance and we didn't get it. My representatives from BJU appeared on local television and basically said that Chris would not be expelled for do right BJU. What they neglected to say and of course, in true fundamental fashion, this is what they did, they would just find some other reason to expel him. And in this case, they kept, they kept heaping on the demerits. They had him report to the Dean of Men at least once a week, and uh, they had someone else uh, constantly hounding him about, if I'm understanding this right, shaving after 12. I don't understand that. I know some of the rules were kind of funny there. You couldn't speak to a girl after six o'clock because you know, she would turn into a pillar of salt and we, we can't have that. So eventually what pushed them over the edge is Chris Peterman went into a local Starbucks and while he was at the Starbucks saw a laptop open and on that laptop screen was the episode from the TV show Glee. And that's what pushed him over the edge. An outrage! An abomination! From everywhere from South Carolina to Paris Hilton is talking about this man from Bob Jones University who got expelled because he watched an episode of Glee. But now you know there's more to the story as they certainly don't want you to know. Peterman's departure from Bob Jones University is not the first uh, one of note. Uh, Billy Graham went to Bob Jones College and 
He left because he couldn't take the standards, and Bob Jones Sr. told him that if he left Bob Jones College, he would never amount to anything in evangelism. And of course, we saw the outcomes of that prophecy, didn't we? So, since Chris Peterman's departure from Bob Jones has been probably the most notable in Bob Jones University history for having been viewed by so many at the same time. I mean, when Billy Graham left Bob Jones, he didn't have people cheering him on or saluting him. And when I left Bob Jones, I certainly didn't have people across the nation uh, cheering and saluting me. But Chris Peterman is leaving Bob Jones on really probably the most noble thing that you could go out on. You know, taking a stand and demanding accountability in the face of the lackluster way that they've treated uh, child abuse victims, adult survivors of uh, child abuse, I might add. Not to mention some of the horrible um, advice they've given to rape victims, uh, where, the, where some of their counselors have asked rape victims if uh, they felt any pleasure during the rape. And um, if they did, they needed to ask God's forgiveness, because that kind of thing was, you know, normal, but they needed to uh, ask God's forgiveness if they felt any enjoyment. And if you think I'm making it up, go to Facebook right now and uh, start checking out a lot of the stories and quotes under Do Right BJU. Uh, that's still there. I don't believe that that's in the control of the BJU administration. So I think some of those stories are up and some of those testimonies are up and make up your own mind about the crazy world of the IFB.